Good morning guys! Hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be vlogging my hair because you know I did a hair video years ago maybe like three years ago on my YouTube. I go to a different hairdressers now I get a different color and cut done and I thought it was a good idea to show you guys my updated hair routine because I do get lots of questions about it so I'm gonna take you today to salon with me. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do, how long it takes, the results, how often I go there. We can chat to my stylist about the products that we use and stuff and then I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna show you all of the stuff I use to like maintain it and then how I style it at home as well. I've just got up, it's Thursday and I haven't seen my hairdresser in about eight weeks. I see her every two months. Gonna head down today. Um, my hair was washed like two days ago and I'd straightened it. But as you can see, it's like proper grown out. Okay, so we're down in the beautiful part of London called South Kensington. I actually go to a salon called Paul Edmonds. He's quite a famous hairstylist, editorial stylist. He's been around for ages. He's got two salons in London, his original one in South Ken, and then he's got a new one in Battersea. And I used to go to the Battersea one, but actually South Ken is like way easier for me to get to. I've been coming here for about a year now. In fact, November last year was my first appointment with him. I actually had had extensions for the good part of a year, and I'd just taken them out, and they literally, my hair was not in a good way at all. It was really like quite long, but also super straggly at the same time because I hadn't cut it in over a year. <laughs> so yeah, when the extensions came out, the the reality of what my hair condition was was like pretty bad. Taylor's been doing my colours since the outset. She's really really good. She's actually super young but so talented for her age. She does a really really great full head of blonde highlights. So what I do is I alternate between full head and half head full head half head and then I've just been getting up the bob an inch off every two months but now my hair's in better condition so we're only taking like half an inch but the blonde that they do is just like the best love it love it love it in a crazy turn of events I've turned up here today and they've just informed me that Taylor, my hairdresser, my colorist, has left. She left a week ago. I'm just in the bathroom because I'm taking off my jumper. But yeah, I'm like, I don't mean to sound like a drama queen, but that sort of shit really fucks me off. They tried to get in touch with me, but they didn't have my original phone number because it was initially a year ago they booked through the PR company who doesn't actually look after them anymore. So they couldn't get in touch, apparently. Which I'm just a bit like, you could have Instagram like DM'd me or something because you know that I always tag you guys on Instagram. So like, whatever. Try not to be a drama queen about it. So I'm seeing a guy called Marvin today. I've. <laughs> briefed him, you better believe it, on how I like the vlog doing. But yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. Oh, I'm so sad Taylor's gone if she's watching this. Where the fuck have you gone? This salon is so nice. I love this wall, I'm like hypnotized by it. So cool. I don't mean to harm girl, but Paul Edmund is right over here. is absolutely obsessed with Lotus Biscoffs biscuits. So yummy. Okay guys, I'm here with Marvin. Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's gonna be doing my colour today. I've already told them what would what I have done, but will you sort of tell them in more technical professional terms? So we're going to do a couple of highlights. So we need to be blonder. We don't want to be hashy blonde as we have discussed no, before. No, ashy. We want to be like creamy blonde, really nice and really natural. We don't want to be rich. Okay. Rich. So no ashy. So a lot of the time when people go and get their blonde done, they think that by putting like a purple treatment is going to like make their hair look blonder. And actually, I found a lot of the time when I do have purple toners put on, my hair can actually look a little bit duller, a little bit darker. And yet, we don't want to ever be a brassy blonde ever. You want a clean blonde, but I also really like creamy blonde. So that's why I get a creamy toner put on and I avoid purple toners by all costs. And another thing we like to do, even though we do all like all over highlights, can you tell them a little bit about how, like, the style of the highlights? Because like you can have people that do like more chunky, uh, yeah, so sparse, or like. So we don't want the chunky highlights. Chunky highlights more. Okay. Yeah. 
speaker wants something really natural, so we're going to do fine highlights. The lot way of them. It's the lot, lot of them. Lot. Pack in the foil. Yeah, exactly. Um, not too fine because if it's too fine, it's going to just mix inside your hair. You're not gonna see the, the difference. It's just a mix, a nice mix between fine and a bit. Yeah. So you're gonna do two different sort of. You're gonna do fine and a little bit thicker. Yeah, and exactly. Mix it in. Yeah. Like that, we're going to have a nice mix and a nice, really natural mix. Yeah. So a lot of the time, like I've been blonde now for well all my life. I've been getting highlights since I was about 16 years old, and I've had all different types of techniques and all of that sort of thing. And what I found, people often go in because they want something quite natural. They want to be naturally looking blonde, and they say I want fine highlights. Often that can mean that if the, the bleach will mix with your natural color, and it'll actually dial down the intensity skip the blonde a lot of the time and like you don't want that if you're going to be blonde in my opinion just be blonde get the fine highlights but make sure they're really packed in and also you can ask your stylist to like change the texture like weave in a few thicker pieces and that's just going to make it feel a little bit more natural like the sun's naturally bleached it or like it was your natural color also if you are going for a half head rather than a full head i always say ask your stylist to like do a little bit more on the hair hairline and like at the base of the neck so when you are wearing your hair up it like gives the illusion that you are more blonde. How long am I going to be in the chair for? Ooh, such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for two hours with me and after another two hours for the treatment. Yeah, so this takes about two hours to do. Color wise. We were just talking about how uh, a lot of the time like stylists can learn one sort of highlight technique and then if they can someone can come in and ask for like full high head of highlights and like you know quite a, a full blocky colour and someone can say I want it natural and then often you can find that with a little bit more of a lazier stylist or someone who's not maybe technically as experienced they just give you the same technique every single time. You just want someone that you know is gonna like look at what your hair texture is, the colour your base tone, what the colour you've already got in your hair and like adapt it accordingly. And I've always found it's people that like really take that holistic, unique approach. I always am much happier with the results. You guys, if you've been having blonde for a while, you're probably familiar with like um, sort of like smart blonde or Olivex or some, some formulation that you can add to the either the bleach or put on as a treatment afterwards. It basically strengthens the hair cuticle, the shaft. It almost acts like building blocks to like fill it out and protect it. Strength. I think we use smart bond here, don't we? Yeah, we use smart bond in your hair. Does it go into the bleach or does it go on afterwards? So it's two step, three step to be fair. So what first step I put the product in my um, in my colour. Why? Because I want to keep your hair in a good condition. So what smart bond do is just protect inside your hair and we're going to save, keep the same firm condition of your hair before and after. And the second step is at the back wash. This second step, we just put, put it on the wet hair for 10 minutes. It's a treatment. It's a treatment. So oh, the color comes yeah. out. the hairstylists when they do this because it really is a lot of work, a lot of repetition. Full head is in and that has taken an hour and 40, 40 minutes to do. I'm going to sit here for another 20 um, and then he's going to check the development. The toner's gone in. That creamy, natural toner, no colour. That'll be in five minutes and then we're going to smart bond mask it to the hair. Matilda's with me, she cuts my hair. This is the bit that I always hate the most because I look at myself and I'm like, it's not blonde. Obviously the hair's wet. I go through this stage every single time and I'm, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, it's not blonde enough. It's not enough highlight. Like. attack every time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to be blonde, I want to be blonde, I want to be blonde. And then I look and I'm like, it's not blonde enough. <laughs> Obviously I need to wait till it's dry to see the finished result. So every time I come here, I also get like a collagen strengthening treatment. I don't have a load of time today, so we're only going to put it on for like five, ten minutes. Normally it would be on for like half an hour. Matilda's just applying the mixture now. Yeah. What's in it? So it's a more intensive moisture treatment, but we've also mixed in a strengthening oil and a shine oil as well. Anything that's going to strengthen my hair when you have when I have blonde, like blonde and bleach put in it, it's uh, super, super important. I do weekly masks at home anyway, but this is just a little bit more intense and the steam helps it penetrate the hair shaft a lot deeper as well. We'll be going for about half an inch a centimeter today all over. Yeah, just one length. I'm being very good. I'm like making sure I don't heat style more than like once a week, twice a week at the most. 
always use heat protection spray, masks every week. It's definitely improved your hair. Yeah, definitely. You can't, you can't change genetics at the end of the day. And the more I think about it, the more I think that it's probably just, I've got like, this is just genetically how my hair is supposed to be. This is the amount of hair we've taken off. It's like more than a centimetre, but not quite an inch. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see hair, like, falling from my head I just hate it I hate it hate it hate it heat protection serum yeah. carousels are so good it's just you keep your hair strong but it's not heavy I used to use carousels all the time the light green bottle what's it called um thermic uh cement thermic yeah, yeah. So this is the dark green it's in the same family but yeah it's just more of an intensive repair than the cement thermic so, as you probably guessed by now, I'm super, super fussy about my blow dryers as well. My hair's naturally wavy, so it's got like quite a lot of natural volume in it. So, when I get a blow dry, I always say to the stylist, please, no volume from here to here. sorry for any hairdressers that have to deal with me i'm a nightmare i hold my hands up like hair is one of my i don't see insecurities but in a way like it is like i don't really like my hair that much so when i get it done like it has to be perfect you know anyway that aside i've left the salon as you can see it's like a really lovely clean bright blonde she took quite a bit like quite a bit off actually but that's exactly how i like the edges really blunt really sharp and if you've got fine hair like me getting a blunt cut and no layers really does you the world of good because it makes your hair like more swingy have more volume and fullness at the end I didn't have a time to put any style through it so i've just done a quick straighten and yeah it feels so silky and healthy and you guys saw how much blonde they put on but that collagen treatment they do is really good my hair always feels like a million bucks two weeks up to two weeks after and then i have to like kick up my maintenance regime at home but yeah as you can see the color is great oh, i'm so glad because what a disappointment coming in and finding that your hair colorist isn't there anymore he did a great job nice natural fresh gorgeous all right so i'll pick up this camera again in a few days when it comes to like washing my hair and i'll show you guys all the products i use and i'll also show you how i style it as well see you in a few days Hey guys, so I'm just back from the gym. I washed my hair two days ago, um, but I'm actually gonna show you today how I style it. Now, I don't actually wash my hair more than twice a week usually um, when I'm at home, just because it is dry and I don't feel like it needs, it doesn't get greasy that quickly, so I don't feel like it needs more than two washes a week. So I'm gonna go into the bathroom now and show you what I'm using at home to wash and condition my hair. Okay, so here is what I'm using at the moment to wash my hair. You'll see there's three different shampoos here, and that's because I find my hair, I've got quite needy hair. It's fine, it's wiry, it's very bleached, it's delicate, it's dry, it's just, it's kind of crap to be honest. So the products that I'm using are just really, really nice products that I've tried and tested and I just find are really, really nice for my hair type. Um, they keep it in the best possible condition and manageable as possible. So let's start with the shampoo that I'm currently using. This is Philip Kingsley. Um, he's actually a trichologist, which I really like because I know that the pro all the products that he does are really well thought through. They come from an expert background in hair and scalp health. And the product that I'm using at the moment is a moisture balancing shampoo for medium to longer processed and fine hair combination shampoo. So it's got the, the moisture that I need, but also it's not gonna weigh it down because it's fine and over processed. I don't wanna it in oil and I think a lot of people make that mistake when they do have dry hair they use something that's really really rich and actually just causes a lot of product buildup and that's not what I want because my scalp can be quite sensitive on days when my scalp is acting up which can be due to stress or too much sugar or alcohol I like to use the Neutrogena tea gel range this is actually um, a really well-known product for dandruff but they actually have a really big range now they ex expanded the range and I'm actually using the repair and nourish one so it's good for dry hair like mine 
it's not as stripping as one of the more medicated ones um, that you might have tried in the past so really like Neutrogena tea gel clears up any like itchy flakiness at the first wash and it's a new formula and I'm just getting along really well with this also it's it's not expensive which is great you can find it in most chemists then obviously I've got blonde hair and oh my god I have tried every purple shampoo out there guys believe me this is the one that I'm currently loving at the moment it's by Charles Worthington it's the toning ultraviolet shampoo and it's the colorplex range that they've got so importantly it's free from sulfates and it's got the violet pigments in it which is going to get rid of that brassiness now this one is pretty strong I use it maybe once a week maybe once every 10 days the reason I like this is because it doesn't over dye the hair even though it is really strong I just do a quick wash and I always follow with a proper shampoo because guys if you didn't know this a color purple shampoo is not a real shampoo you need to be following it with a real shampoo because it's not going to clean your scalp as well as the others it's there as a sort of like color treatment the purple is really great it knocks out all the brassiness but not too much so it's going to give me like gray hair I don't leave it in very long at all maybe 60 seconds tops and what I love most about this is it doesn't dry my hair out because I find a lot of purple shampoos they're so strong they do dry the hair out and this one doesn't let's move on to treatments I don't think that shampoo and conditioner is ever enough especially if you've got difficult hair like mine and you do heat style it and color it without these sort of things in my routine my hair would be in a pretty bad way I think so let's start with repair products first um here's a few examples of products that I've loved and used in the past or I'm still using right now L'Oreal have an expert range called absolute repair and this range actually focuses on repairing the hair so it's going to add a little bit more protein into the hair shaft and that's what's going to strengthen your hair because hair's made of protein it's fairly inexpensive um it does have some hydrating effects but mainly it's just there to strengthen this one also from philip kingsley the part of their trichotherapy range this is um the volumizing protein spray now i don't use this for volume i just use it i spray it maybe once a week down my hair after washing and it's just again a protein injection to strengthen the hair shaft really really like this as you can see i've used it all up now these two products although their main purpose is to strengthen and repair sometimes when you've got products with a lot of protein in it, it can be quite drying on the hair if you use it regularly so it is really important to alternate between a strengthening treatment and then something that's gonna hydrate your hair a little bit more but we'll get onto that in a minute here we have John Masters Organics Repair Mask these two products here are examples of products that are gonna strengthen and repair as well as hydrate so if you just want to use one thing then I would really recommend either this for something that's a little bit more organic or then something that's a little bit less natural is the Olaplex it's really well known and it is uh, for professional use the number one but you do, there is a number three that you can take home and use and oh my god this stuff is insane as a treatment it's incredible it's really 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 good and not only repairing and strengthening but oh my gosh my hair feels incredible after using this it is not cheap guys but if you really need to do something for your hair I would recommend that if you're blonde and you are struggling and then over here we've got something really natural as well from Maria Nilla who is a Stockholm based brand and they're also vegan she has a structure repair hair mask but this one also is really hydrating too so if you do like vegan hair care then you might want to check her out moving into hydration and sort of like more manageable silky hair these are a few products I really love the naughty 97% natural to the rescue intense moisture treatment now I wouldn't use this more than maybe once a month or once every three weeks it is super super intense it's when your hair's gone through a lot you've been maybe heat styling a little bit and it just feels a bit ugh, a bit dry a bit just nothing a bit dull so this is really good for that and I love this brand it's especially good for if you've got curly or wavy hair so this is a weekly treatment from Bumble and Bumble I've been using the invisible oil range for ages I really really like it like really intense hydrating treatment that you wouldn't use you maybe use it like once a once a month actually they also do a mask in the range as well it's a really nice pre shampoo mask you can actually leave this on overnight as well super super nice again for very dry to dry hair it's really intense but lovely stuff and then this is probably like my favorite product I feel like I my hair is getting such a treat this is actually an in salon product Fusio dose you might have seen it in salons you can actually get a home kit as well I'm gonna try and find it on the internet and link it for you guys you get six treatments in the home kit what you do is you inject this into this base and then you put the cap on and you spritz it over hair after you've shampooed and towel dried it is insane honestly I cannot tell you 
every time I go to the salon, I, I hope they've got this because I will opt for this treatment. It makes my hair, like it changes the texture of my hair. It makes my hair so silky and so manageable. The most amazing thing about this is you don't have to leave it in for any time at all. It's like less than a minute. You get the insanest results and then it makes blow drying like uh, so easy and then even after you shampoo next and then the next time you can still feel the effects of this now it's not cheap but it's insane i love it so <laughs> those are kind of how i alternate my hair treatments i will do a strengthening fiber mask with protein and then i'll alternate with a hydration one and then sometimes I'll whack this one as well for good measure. It ain't easy getting good hair, man. I'm not even saying I have good hair. I'm just saying this is kind of the length I have to go to in order to keep my hair looking decent. So let's go over here and I'll talk you through a few styling products I use and then I'm gonna style my hair and show you how I do it. All right, so in my drawer where I keep some of my makeup is a few styling products. I'm not gonna talk through all of them because I don't really use a lot of them all the time, but there's two products here that I use quite regularly. The first one is Philip Kingsley Daily Damage Defense. It's a daily leave-in conditioner. When I'm not using that Kerastase spray that I showed you the treatment over there, I use this after washing, just before styling. It just makes my hair really, really manageable. The brush just slips through it and there's no breakage. In terms of brushes, I use the Sensitized Fragile Hair Brush. This is the Tangle to Use version. And I also use my wet brush sometimes as well. It just depends which one I reach for first. But these are both super soft bristles that don't break fine or damaged hair. I really would suggest if you don't use a fragile hairbrush then you get one if you have fragile hair because it will stop breakage and then for heat styling i never ever style without some heat protection spray this is one i've been using for a year it protects um hair for up to 230 degree heat so it's just perfect it smells great too and it's drugstore price super cheap so i've just put some makeup on because i'm going to shoot in a second but this is how i basically style my hair if i'm doing my favorite look which is like a low tide soft wave so nothing like crazy just something that looks really natural and and it falls out really nicely over the coming days and just gives you just kind of some nice body it's quite smooth nothing wild um, but just modern as well and it's great if you've got shoulder length hair or shorter I have quite voluminous wavy hair so in order to if I haven't styled it immediately I do get a little bit of like volume at the crown which I absolutely hate I think it really really ages you so I'm gonna start out just by taking that um, Tresemme heat protection spray and just spraying it all over and then I'm gonna take my blow dryer and I'm just gonna basically flatten the crown just to get rid of any excess volume and make sure the hairs all going in the right direction I've just applied heat to it and I'm just holding it and that's just gonna correct the direction of the hair growth because I want it smooth. See the difference? Whoop. Again, just hold it flat. Okay, so that's the first step when I'm waving my hair. All right, so next up I'm gonna put those low tide waves through that I just mentioned. My favorite tool to do this is the GHD Curve. Now it's a ceramic plated tong. GHD do a lot of these, but um, what's different about this one is it's actually an oval shaped like that. And I just feel like I'm not, it doesn't make that much of a difference. If you've got a round barrel, that's fine. Like I use one for years myself. I just feel like the way it falls is just a little bit nicer when I use this. Also, super super quick they heat up really fast that's why it's so important to use your heat protection spray <laughs> so just while that's turned on i'm just going to go through the ends and underneath with this and then what i do is i just make sure i take those really fine bits at the front which are super prone to breakage just to give them an extra coating and i'm just going to brush through we can get started right so because i've got quite fine hair i do tend to just only do two or three segments i'll do three today just to show you guys but sometimes if, in a, if i'm in a rush i will just part it into two segments and do them like that so the first bit of my hair goes up and this is the bit that i'm going to do first take sections like I tend to take quite wide sections, maybe just over an inch, but that's because my hair is quite fine. And then I just wrap it like that, and I count really fast to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that tends to be enough for my hair. Again, if you've got thicker hair, maybe use smaller sections or count slower. Okay, so the way I put the waves in, I always do away from the face. So I'm wrapping the hair away from the face like that. But what I do is every two or three, I'll do a wrap inwards. So I'll show you now on the next one. So this one is wrapping away as normal. And then the next one I'm gonna show you, this one, instead of wrapping away like I did previously, I'm gonna put the wand in front and wrap inwards. And now what this does is, it stops your hair from looking too like 
everything's flowing into one almost it adds just like i feel like a little bit more extra movement and it just looks cooler if that makes sense it's not too like glam glam kim kardashian it's like more a little bit more beachy and undone but still smooth because i don't want like crazy crazy texture i want it smooth but i want the movement there so two out one in two out one in that's kind of the way i do it not to get more movement all right i'm just gonna do the rest of this section now Sometimes it's an added measure, just oops, after I've done one layer, I just lightly spritz it. Another tip I have, if you do have hair that doesn't naturally hold a wave very well, so if you've got extra silky straight hair, then sometimes what I would recommend is just holding the curl in your hand and letting it cool before you drop it. That way the shape is gonna hold longer and take more of a shape because our hair is really, really impressionable when it's hot. So if you leave it to cool in your hand, it's gonna hold the shape a lot longer because it's sort of like cooled down in that shape so it like remembers it more. So I'm just doing the second section of my head. You'll see that I'm taking the curler all the way to the scalp pretty much. I'm not gonna do that on the final layer of curls because I want them to kind of start half halfway down my face and that's how you get that sort of low tide wave look but all the underneath sections always start them up by the scalp this hair is going to be covered at the end of the day so I've done two out I'm going to take this one inwards <laughs> We are at the top layer now which is essentially just the crown okay so i always do middle parting and then i'm going to start from the front and i'm going to work my way back just like i did for all the other layers now for this bit you'll see what i do is i hold the iron here and i just move it down and i start where my eyes start because when it drops out it's actually going to fall a lot lower down my face and create that low tide look that we want so that's exactly where i want it and when i brush it out it will drop a little bit lower so again the same pattern for the final layer as well Hold it, smooth down the root, and then start winding at the eye. Okay, so there you go, that's everything done. Um, obviously not brushed out, obviously not gonna go out like this because I look like a Victorian child. But I'm just gonna spritz some spray on, and it's, I always do this before I brush it out as well, just to lock in the shape the hair's still warm as well, which means it's still malleable. The two out and then one in, two out and then one in, three layers. And now I'm gonna brush it out. My tangle teaser, start from the bottom, tease it out. Sometimes when your hair's a little bit dirty as well, it holds the shape a little bit better, I find. So yeah, and that is how I do my everyday low tide waves, just really relaxed quite polished but like with a lot of movement as well and I do find that if I've got that blunt cut even though I've got fine hair it does make my hair look a lot thicker and they will drop really nicely over the coming days until it's just kind of like a nice blowout almost so yeah a little bit of spray through the parting just get those flyaways and yeah done okay so that has been my hair vlog this tutorial also well requested so i hope that makes sense to all of you guys everything i've mentioned in the video will be linked down below so you can have a little look if you want to and any questions at all do leave them and i will try my best to get back to you obviously i'm not a hairdresser but i've had years of experience being blonde and dealing with really temperamental hair so hopefully i can answer your questions thanks so much for watching if you did like this video give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you haven't already and bye from me for now and i will See you back here really soon.